Rudy Giuliani has not had a good couple of days. And in fact, every time he speaks to a reporter or a TV host, he just seems to be making things worse for the president. See on Sunday, Giuliani spoke to both the times and to uh, NBC's meet the press where he mentioned that Donald Trump's Trump tower Moscow meetings or talks or negotiations or whatever it was. Yeah. Those went on throughout Donald Trump's entire presidential campaign, contradicting what Trump himself and the rest of the administration had been saying for months. They said, no, this ended before he even ran for president. Then Giuliani goes out there, tells multiple different outlets that no, 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 they were, they were doing this the whole time, the entire time he was running for president. They were still trying to make this deal happen which as many of us know, this deal is obviously the kind of centerpiece of potential collusion. Maybe this was used as leverage by one party over the other, who knows? But Giuliani says, yeah, they, they never stopped talking about that. And then later in the day he had to come out and say, why? Well, yeah, I was, I was wrong about that. I, I was, I was speaking hypothetically is what he said. He says, this was hypothetical. So they were only hypothetically still talking about Trump tower all throughout the campaign. I don't think that Giuliani knows what hypothetical means, uh, but sure. Okay. Why not? Yeah. It was hypothetical. They weren't actually talking, but they could have hypothetically been talking. Uh, and then he made things even worse than that. If you can imagine it, (laughs) he spoke to the New Yorker in an interview published on Monday. Uh, where he was talking about the Buzzfeed story with Michael Cohen. And he said, I knew from the start that this Cohen story was bogus because I've heard all the tapes. In fact, this is exactly, exactly what he says. Uh, I have been through all the tapes. I have been through all the texts. I have been through all the emails and I knew none existed. None existed being instances of Trump telling Cohen to lie. And then basically when the special counsel said that, just in case there are any others I might not know about, they probably went through others and found the same thing to which the reporter then asked, wait, what, what tapes have you gone through? (laughs) And then Giuliani responds, I shouldn't have said tapes. They, they alleged there were texts and emails that corroborated that Cohen was saying that the president told him to lie. There were no texts. There were no emails and the president never told him to lie reporter then follows up. So there were no tapes you listened to though. Giuliani says no tapes. Well, I have listened to tapes, but none of them concern this. So there's tapes, but there's not tapes, but there are tapes, but they don't talk about this specific instance. Again, another big thing that we've been wondering about all of these investigations and all of the shady things that Cohen did on behalf of Donald Trump is whether or not Cohen actually recorded the conversations. Michael Cohen was a guy who liked to record things. We've heard a couple of the recordings already. And now Giuliani comes out and accidentally admits like, yeah, I've listened to all these tapes that, oh crap, they don't exist. Never mind. Sorry, but they are real, but they're not about this. They're about other things. And Mueller has the tapes and he probably listened to them too. That's a pretty big deal, right? I mean, this guy not only just admitted that what we'd all suspected is in fact true, but he also just kind of negated a lot of talking points from the administration. And he is supposed to be the one out here representing Donald Trump and saving him from all of this nonsense. Now, just a quick point about that Buzzfeed story, just to, you know, calm everybody's nerves. Cause right now you still have people saying, no, 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 every, every bit of it's true probably, except maybe like one thing. And then others who say, no, Buzzfeed's totally busted on this. I'm just going to tell a quick story during the Watergate era, when they were doing those investigations, Woodward Bernstein put out a story before the massive one came out, uh, alleging a lot of things that happened. They spoke to a source. And they reported that the source had, uh, said some things in a testimony to a grand jury and they reported them. But then here's the thing, the grand jury uh, or special prosecutor come out and say, no, this isn't true. This did not happen. So Woodward and Bernstein, you know, this is before they got huge and famous, they were crushed. They thought for certain that their entire Watergate thing was based on lies and that it, you know, wasn't gonna, uh, uh, bear any fruit here. Turns out the reason the special prosecutor's office came out and debunked their story 
was because that information was never given during testimony. It was given during another circumstance. So that was the only part of the story that was wrong. And when you look at Mueller's offices, uh, uh, you know, saying this story's not true in some regards, it could be something as simple as that. It could be, well, they said it came from texts and emails when in fact it came from tapes that would make their story technically factually inaccurate and that they did not gather that information in the manner in which Buzzfeed reported. So there is that. It could also mean that everything Buzzfeed said was an absolute lie. We don't know, we won't know until the end of this investigation, but for the time being, it's best to just understand that we don't know what's true from that, so put it aside for now. Nonetheless, the more Rudy Giuliani goes out there and talks, the worse he's gonna make things for the President of the United States. And that is what we should be focusing on right now, because over the last three days, Giuliani has either intentionally, accidentally, perhaps he's a double agent working for Trump, who knows at this point, but that guy has seriously slaughtered multiple talking points from this administration just because of his sheer stupidity. One of today's video sponsors is Blinkist.com. Blinkist.com takes some of the best nonfiction books available and condenses them into either 15 minute audiobooks or very short 15 minute reads so users can get the information that they need and move on to the next. They take the key parts of these nonfiction books, whether it's self-help, business, history, politics, and they condense it into easy to digest information. What's great about this, especially in my line of work here, is that I can go through, find any political history book that I want, get the 15 minute audio version and listen to it while on my way to work. On the way home, I can do a second book, a third or fourth in the evening if you have the time, but that's what's so great about it. It's the best parts, the key takeaways, and the vital information that Blinkist.com provides. And right now, the first 100 users to go to Blinkist.com slash Ring of Fire are going to get seven days absolutely free. That's seven days to listen to or read as many of these condensed nonfiction books as possible. And then after that, if you want the full membership, you'll get 25% off going to Blinkist.com slash Ring of Fire. There's also a link at the very top of this video description. Again, only the first 100 users are gonna get the seven days free, so make sure you act fast.